Robin, I've been fascinated by the fine-tuning problem. Tell me what it is, how it works, and what are some examples? Well, for the, about the last 40 years, scientists have discovered that the universe, the, its basic structure has to be just right in order for life to occur, particularly intelligent, conscious observers like ourselves. And this fine-tuning problem comes down to basically three different sorts of fine-tuning. First, there's the fine-tuning of the laws of nature. Second is the fine-tuning of what scientists call the constants of physics. And third, the fine-tuning of what they call the initial conditions of the universe. Let me start with the first, um, the laws of nature. The laws of nature have to be just right in order for life to occur. For example, if you didn't have gravity uh, the, a uni or a universal attractive force, then matter in the universe would never clump. When the universe blew out in the Big Bang, you would just have, simply have matter dispersed, never clumping together into planets or stars. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, the force that holds neutrons and protons together, then all protons would repel each other and you could not get atoms with greater atomic number than hydrogen. And in that case, um, unlike what you see in Star Trek, you cannot get um, complex life out of a hydrogen gas cloud. It doesn't have enough stable complexity. Um, if you didn't have the electromagnetic force, if it just didn't exist, then you wouldn't get complex chemistry. Those are laws. Those are laws. That's category one. That's category one. Category two are the constants. The constants of physics. Now, when we look at the, a lot of laws, like force laws, in fact, most laws, have um, various what they call free parameters. Let me give you an example. Let's look at gravity. Gravity has, there's Newton's law of gravity. It's force equals g times the first mass this, times the second mass divided by their distance squared. That g is a critical number. If I were to make it one half of what it is right now, you would weigh one half the, the amount. Then there's the cosmological constant. Which controls the expansion of the universe. It opposes gravity. In the case of the cosmological constant, there's a natural expected range for it to occur in. Depending on how you calculate this range, it's anywhere from 1 to um, 10 to the 120th power times what it is now. Which is more, it's a bigger number than every particle in the known universe. Right. So it's, it's, it's way, way larger than even that. So what you have to have, it has to be adjusted just right. The estimate is it has to be adjusted one part in 10 to the 120th power. Which is incalculable. Incalculable. Now, if you had a ruler stretched across the universe and you, had, you were talking about fine-tuning, you thought of it as a radio dial, it would have, it would have to be fine-tuned to much, much less than one trillionth of a trillionth of an inch at the very beginning of the ruler. That's how fine-tuned it would have to be. Okay, now that's the second category. The third category are the, initial, the initial conditions, conditions of, the of the universe. Correct. And the initial conditions have to be just right in order for life to occur. The biggest one of these initial conditions is the very low entropy state of the universe. If it wasn't in that ordered state, you wouldn't have usable energy. Low entropy corresponds to usable energy. So if you cut across all of these uh, uh, three areas, the laws, the constants, and the initial conditions, what kind of conclusion do you come to? Myself, I come to the conclusion this provides strong evidence that there's a designer, somebody who set the universe up, structured it in just the right way in order for conscious, intelligent bodied beings to come into existence. If I didn't know you, I would think that you have just given me a wonderful reductionist principle to support an atheistic view of the world because everything makes sense. I don't need some external element, some God, some supernatural force. I think it actually glorifies God the most to see that how wonderfully constructed nature is, that everything works. And that God need not intervene. Need not intervene. In fact, if a God had to intervene all the time, it would be sort of a sloppy or bad creator, a bad engineer, a mathematician, if you will.